So the kind of key features that really help differentiate Silverlight Media are available on the device. Um, there's a couple limitations. Um, the probably most important one is you can only have one media element at a time. Um, it's kind of a limitation of the, the harder resources you're using. And there's no video brush support. Um, but you can still do, you know, you can apply perspective transforms and, um, you know, clips and everything else to your media uh, surface. Um, the other thing you can do for media is you can use the, the XNA sound effect API. This is another API brought over from, from XNA that you can use inside of your Silverlight, Silverlight app um, that lets you, it's kind of optimized for game type sounds, so shorter sounds, looping sounds, things that you need to play kind of, um, kind of on top of each other. So that works pretty well for just playing wave information. And then we talked about vibration. Um, not too, n nothing magical there. You just, you know, you get the vibrate controller and you, you have it vibrate. Um, I'm not sure if the App Store will discourage you from vibrating for too long, um, but that's, uh, that's a, a call we'll talk about in, in the future. What is Play Ready DRM? Play Ready DRM is, is kind of Microsoft's, um, you know, DRM that they use, you know, for, for Xbox, for, uh, for Silverlight in the past. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of V2 of, you know, the existing DRM technology that Microsoft had. So it's, it's been around for a couple years. Um, it's kind of complicated. We can talk more about DRM afterwards if you're interested. Um, all right, so, so the web browser. Who here is familiar with the Silverlight 4 web browser control? Who's played with that a little bit? So a few folks. So this one is pretty similar to the Silverlight 4 control. It has a couple um, tricks up its sleeve that the Silverlight 4 one doesn't have. Um, the most interesting thing that you can do when you're, when you're building the OS as you're building a developer platform is you can work together with, with other teams in the OS to make changes. So um, the key thing that the web browser control has is it can act as, as uh, a surface like any other control. So you can do perspectives, um, you know, transforms and you know, clips and other things with it that you can't really do with the Silverlight one um, because we, you know, we work with the browser team to, to get a much higher fidelity browser experience inside, um, inside the app platform. So you know, the general stuff applies. You can, you can point it to a URL to display um, web content or you can you know, use local content out of isolated storage. You can set the relative path so you can fish stuff out of isolated storage and you, know, you can have still you know, relative URLs inside of your, your web page. Um, it has all the multi-touch stuff built in, so you've got you know, pan, double tap, pinch to zoom. All the IE gestures are kind of built in. They just work. Um, uh, the application can, um, can interact with JavaScript, so you've got, um, you don't have the DOM bridge in Silverlight anymore because you're, there's no outside browser, but now you can have an inside browser, so you can in interact with uh, you know, the JavaScript engine inside of the, the web browser, so that can kind of fire out and talk back. Um, and also, some things to note is that the, the thing is optimized for privacy. So every single web, uh, web browser instance is kind of has its cache and cookies kind of siloed per application. So you, caching something here won't help a different app. Um, and also, script is disabled by default. So um, you can turn it on as an app author if you want, but it's kind of, again, optimized for privacy. So just a quick overview of how, how this, the kind of DOM, DOM access between script and Silverlight works. So the blue box is Silverlight, the, the gray box is JavaScript. And what you're doing here is you're basically, there's a, there's a method on the web browser control called invoke script. And what that does is you give it the name of a function, in this case run script stuff, and you give it an arbitrary number of, of parameters, and those basically get passed to the, the JavaScript engine, and it, it calls whatever your, um, whatever your method that you passed in, and it can take a, basically a string back as a return parameter. And there's also, going the opposite direction, um, you can basically do window.external.notify, and that'll fire an event on top of, on the web browser control, and you can, you can fish back um, whatever string was passed in from JavaScript and fish that out into your, uh, your managed code. So let's, uh, let's play with the web browser a little bit. It's kind of fun. So first thing we'll do is open uh, an existing project that I wrote a while ago. It uses the web browser. So what we've got here on the design surface is um, I'm making a web browser, essentially. You've got a web browser control, you've got a text box, and you've got a go button. And when you click the go button, it navigates. So it's kind of what you would expect. So again, we'll uh, run this in the emulator. So you know, we'll, we'll do your standard navigate, bing. By the way, I hope, uh, 
hope the Bing guys work on their mobile version. It's not terribly great right now. You'll see it in a sec. So that I actually already clicked this, so we optimized. So, um, like again, you can do, um, you know, I didn't write any code. The, the web browser just by default does, you know, double tap to zoom. You can go to image search, pan around. Um, the SIP, the software keyboard is also wired up through the web browser control. So you can, you know, do the things you expect there. So let's maybe search for some mixed images. Oops. So, you know, we've got right here is, you know, basically the same web page. The run, you know, basically it's that version of IE is a control inside of the, um, inside of Silverlight. And you know, it's kind of neat. You can, you can just do your own surfing. But because it's, it's a Silverlight control, like other Silverlight controls, you can you can do some more fun stuff with it. Like have a bunch of web browsers running, with uh, an image in a spinning cube with a perspective animation applied to it. So, um, you know, it's not your dad's web browser control. <laughs> so now we'll uh, we'll do a quick uh, quick project to show off the the script interop. So again, we'll add a uh, let's see text box button, and we'll add a web browser. Again, you can just drag this guy right out. Bug right now, it's default size is zero, zero. We're on it. So what we're going to do here is basically have a, um, a little piece of HTML inside the web browser control that's going to talk out to, the, um, to Silverlight, and this button is going to basically talk back into the script. So make a web browser a little bigger. Um, first thing we'll do is add our HTML page that we're going to use, the project. And make that an embedded resource. So what you see here is we basically have um, it's super simple HTML. We have a text box and a button inside the HTML, and if you click the button, it calls back out window.external, and we have this method here that's going to set the text on the, the HTML text box, and which will call from Silverlight. So uh, let's go back. So first thing we'll do is. Reference the uh, or hook up the loaded event. So something you you learn real quick. Don't wait until the web browser is loaded. It doesn't like to be navigated. It doesn't it doesn't like to be poked and prodded until it's been loaded inside the visual tree and the kind of inner um, ActiveX control has been spun up. The inner web browser essentially has been fired up. So what we'll do here is we'll set we'll get um, the HTML as a stream. So just your standard stream reader stuff. So fishing out the embedded resource as a string. Then we'll say web browser one. So instead of before we navigated to a URL, now we can navigate to a string. So you can just pass in an, any arbitrary string of content. And that should basically load up our, our web page. And then we'll do a button click is we'll say web browser dot one dot invoke script. Give it our method name, and we'll pass in the text box dot text. We're getting there. So this is our method we're going to call from JavaScript. If I, if I don't copy it, I'll screw it up. Oh, thanks. And then, so to call backwards, we will to the script notify here. And before I forget, we're going to en en enable script, which is the property. As I mentioned before, it's disabled by default. Script enabled, true. So what we'll do is we'll set the text box dot text equal to what we get from the event args. More value added. All right, 